I'm not sure I understand what the nature of Satan is. Is he a real person? I don't deny that. But if he is a real person, then I would be very sympathetic to the uh, tradition which uh, teaches in the early church, origin, but not just origin, many others, uh, particularly on in the Greek uh, side of the early church, that even Satan will eventually be redeemed. But because in the Bible, when it talks about universal restoration, universal salvation, salvation of all, all those in Adam are condemned, even so all of those in Christ receive justification in life, Romans 5, 18, and there are a number of other texts. Um, in that context, uh, we don't necessarily have any claim being made about fallen angels, Satan. But it seems to me, insofar as these are real people, real persons, then uh, philosophically, I would have no trouble claiming that they too will be redeemed. Now, I know some Christians, as soon as you say, well, even Satan, well, because they're thinking of Satan as the incarnation of evil. But I don't see how the incarnation of evil could possibly be a real person. One of the reasons I don't go into this is the texts that I appeal to in my book, for example, deal with all humans, all men, literally. Um, and the nature of these evil powers is not really made clear. How could Satan, if he really had no ignorance at all, reject the grace of God? It makes no sense to me. But we don't know much about that story. I mean, uh, he may have uh, had a good deal of ignorance. Um, he certainly didn't have clarity of vision if he rebelled against God and led the angels uh, in rebellion against God, the fallen angels. It reminds me of Paradise Lost where Satan uh, gives this heroic sounding speech. Uh, better to reign in heaven, I mean in hell, than to serve in heaven. So he thinks that he can reign in hell, where only God reigns. How irrational can you get? Uh, let me begin by telling a, a story about uh, Metropolitan Callistus Ware that he, he likes to tell. When he was a young priest, he was assigned to pick up a, or at least assigned to, to drive a bishop, um, whom he was really looking forward to having a conversation on that subject, and he asked him about it. And the bishop gave a prompt, abrupt reply. It's none of your business. And in one sense, you know, the bishop is right. I mean, as Christians, demon, you know, Satan and his fellow fallen demons are our enemy. We renounce them at baptism. Uh, and there cannot be, a f right now, for us, a false peace between that. I mean, we are the objects of their hatred and malice. But, of course, most universalists have not been satisfied to leave it at that. Certainly Origen, most likely, there's a debate about him, but uh, Origen, St. Gregory of Nyssa, St. Isaac the Syrian, each of them among many others have uh, believed that God's love intends 
uh, the unholy angels, the fallen angels, and that in, a, in his wisdom and his good time, he will find a way to reconcile them to himself. If the devil is an actual um, consciousness, like, like a being that's, that, that's fallen, that was a view that was never crystallized in the church until the second century, so it's sort of post-biblical in its first developed form. Um, but it seems like a plausible account if you want to make sense of biblical data, so I'm okay with people doing that. But if Satan is a fallen angel, then there is a case to be made for the salvation of Satan. But it's problematized by texts in Revelation and so on. So you have to take all of that into account, but, likewise, but then at the same time Colossians 1 talks about this the principalities and powers being reconciled through the cross. Satan's not one of them, but there's a connection, and so, you know, there's, but it is an area of speculation. On the other hand, if Satan is a symbol of evil, then when evil is eradicated, Satan is eradicated, and you can't talk about the salvation of Satan because you're talking about the salvation of evil itself, which is nonsense. Um, so how you answer that question will partly depend on what you think. Satan is and what you're talking about and different universalists will have different views and so they'll come to different conclusions. I mean it's interesting if you read some 18th century universalists like Alhan and Winchester the way they try and deal with this is that uh, Satan he is very conscious about what scripture says about him being tormented unto the ages of ages so he, Elhan and Winchester is a Baptist revivalist universalist, and he says, well, Satan will be tormented for millennia upon millennia, you know, millennia. But in the end, the very last thing that will happen uh, before the um, God is all in all is the redemption of Satan. That is, so, so he still wants to make sure that you're all clear that Satan gets tormented for unimaginable amounts of time you know <laughs> but he will be redeemed so you know so he feels a little bit torn on this but in the end he he does have a redeemed satan because of course the big concern in those days uh it was well if you take away hell people are not gonna behave themselves right because so you need to make hell really fierce so that people behave themselves and the fear about universalism was well people have got no motive to be good as if the only reason to be good was you fear of being. Um, so universalists were often very keen to stress, no, no, it really is bad and it's particularly bad for Satan. I mean, it'll be super bad multiplied. Um, so they, they were sort of falling over themselves to say how bad it would be. Uh, but, with a, but, but in the end, of course, if Christ's work of redemption restores all of creation, that would have to include Lucifer. A question that I uh, usually have is, well, who are we to judge God's grace? Uh, we have read in the First Corinthians 15 and Colossians uh, 1 and, and Romans 5 that all creation, all creation uh, will uh, be subject to him and, and God will be all in all. And all creation comes from Christ and, and all creation is redeemed in Christ. So who are we to to question God's uh, sovereignty and God's love. Uh, if uh, God created everything, uh, uh, the spiritual realm and, and the physical realm, and all will be made new and will be redeemed, uh, or has been redeemed already in Christ as the second Adam in his death and resurrection, then all creation will be redeemed. I mean, the bottom line is, is God God or not? You know, is God all powerful, or is He just almost all powerful? You know that He could um, He could redeem even the wickedest person, but Satan He can't. Well, why can't He redeem Satan? I mean, it just seems to me that uh, Satan is thrown into the lake of fire. The purpose of that lake of fire is to uh, not just to punish, but to um, purify. And so, why couldn't Satan be purified? That was the view of Origen and especially Gregory of Nyssa. Gregory of Nyssa was really quite strong on that idea. I don't discuss that issue in my book, by the way, um, just because that is a kind of a red flag. But I personally think if God's able to transform and save the most wicked sinner that we see, why can't he do that with the angelic world as well? It just seems to me that that would be the obvious answer.